The Lumberjacks swung and missed at the ACU Wildcats. I'm Sharon e. Morosky. And I'm Grant Boone. Now ACU takes its 2-0 conference record back to the coach's old stomping grounds. Let's talk some ACU football right now on the Ken Collins Show. Welcome to week five of the Ken Column Show presented by Lawrence Hall. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU senior journalism major Sharon Nemiroski and the head football coach of the ACU Wildcats, Ken Columns. The Wildcats have improved now to 2-0 in the Southland Conference after a 35-32 thriller over Stephen F. Austin at Shotwell Stadium last week. Uh, last week. And coach, how are your nerves? Oh, have good. you recovered? Yeah, they're good now. I mean, in yeah. you know, middle of the third quarter, it was uh, getting a little dicey because they were they were making a run on us, which good teams always do. Yeah, we got up on them, and then that that's that's good football. Yeah, coach, you're two and zero in the conference now, which puts you tied for first. Are the standings something you look at at this point in the game, or how are you feeling? No, not really. It's cool to be two and zero, and but you know what? You got to play good football in order to sustain. Uh, four quarters of quality football. You got to you got to practice, uh, have quality practices. Everybody healthy. I mean, there's a whole lot that goes into it, uh, and, and you know you you look at the standings, and the standings are going to change every single week, and it's, we can't change the quality of of our of our football. So uh, it doesn't matter. But you know what? It is cool to be two and zero in the Southland Conference. Only McNeese State is two and zero, like your team, ACU. The tests keep getting tougher starting with the game tonight against University of Central Arkansas. We'll preview that game a little bit later on, but when we come back, highlights from Saturday's fourth quarter rally to beat Stephen F. Stay with us here on the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show, presented by Lawrence Hall. Last Saturday at Shotwell Stadium, ACU improved to 2-0 in the Southland Conference, a come-from-behind 35-32 victory over Stephen F. Austin. Coach, this was a game with Big plays, high drama, unsung heroes, and one unexpected turn after another. And that was just the opening kickoff. <laughs> you had a little bit of everything with Brandon Richmond. This is a freshman from Cy Fair High School. Tell us what happened on that opening kickoff and how he saved your bacon a bit. Well, they, they, it's called a pooch kick. They pooch it right over our front line to a little open spot. And we know that's a weakness, but still you got to get there. Almost Jamie, never happened. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And Jamie Walker couldn't get there. And about the time I started, uh, here, here comes Brandon Richmond, a, a blur, and just scoops it up, and and uh, now we've got the ball in great field position. And that's a, a play that gets lost in a game that goes down to the wire. But the very first play of the game, if if they pick that up, it's essentially an onside kick. If they get it, they've got it at your 36, and who knows what happens. That's Instead, right. you go seven plays, 64 yards. For the second consecutive week, you score on your opening possession, really nice and crisp. You end it with a Boy, just a perfectly thrown ball to the post to Cedric Gilbert, 23 yards from Parker McKenzie. But before that, you have a fourth and two at their 39, and you go for it. Why? Sure. Well, we knew uh, you're going to have to be aggressive to beat some of these teams. And, 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 and when, when every play, when it seems like the game is hanging in the balance on almost every play, a fourth and two means everything. If you kick the ball to them and try to pin them, pin them back, we, we could have. But you know what? If we kick it out of the back of the end zone, that's not a, that's not a that, that we didn't do ourselves uh, mm. any, any good. So the thing is, we thought we could make two yards, or I wouldn't have done it. So and you got it with a right. with a pass to Sam Lawless, another another young guy, redshirt freshman fullback. You go in and score. Then they get the ball. They're making some nice chunk plays along the way, and they get down to the half yard line on a third and goal. They snap it over the running back's head. He was in the wildcat formation. Then they attempt a field goal, and Lynn Grady, who was all over the field, special teams, defense everywhere, he gets the blocked field goal. There, there have been times that's happened to you the other way. It, it seems like such a momentum changer because it looks like seven, at the very least three, and instead nothing. What does it feel like when you're on the good end of that? Well, it just shows our grit of our defense. You know, they, get, they, they, they gave up yards, they, but, but you know what? They got the ball carrier down on the half-yard line, and it just goes to show you. If it's first and goal, you still got them. Yeah. You just take it. You, you don't know what's going to happen, so keep playing. Play the next play. 
And then when it's fourth down, our, we, we, we've been known to block kicks, multiple kicks uh, uh, sure. per year. We get after guys. And, you know, I don't know. If, I don't think it was a low kick. I think our guys just made a play. You go up 20 to 6, and things are looking pretty good. It, it's, you get an Austin Kill Call in 60 yard punch. You pin them back at their own three yard line. But then in a minute and a half, they go down 97 yards. Final play of the half, they get a touchdown. Were you still positive up 20 to 12, or, or was that. Did that leave a bad taste in your mouth going to the locker room, or maybe both? I yeah, it, I mean, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when you don't play. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a traditional route. It wasn't anything crazy, and we just didn't play it mm -hmm. well. And, and a good quarterback is going to make you pay for that because we didn't get enough heat on him. But, you know, that's a bummer. But you know what? Hey, we're up. Let's handle business in the second half. They start the second half, and you get a stop. You stop them on fourth down. They go for it in your territory. Then you get a fourth and short of your own. And what do you do? You run a fake punt with Dylan Douglas. He gets it by the nose or maybe the nose hair of the football. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember the last time we faked a punt uh, from a punt formation. Then you get a DeAndre Brown 61-yard touchdown run. That play started, Coach, with a high snap to Parker McKenzie. He one-hands it, hands it off to DeAndre. A lot of things went right on that play, didn't it? That's right, and it could have gone really bad. Yeah. It, Parker made a great, basically made a great catch. And, uh, you know, if he bobbles at any, the, the timing and the rhythm is off on the play and we may not uh, do as well. But it was, uh, he made a, a, a guy's a good athlete. Yeah. Uh, made, a, made a good play, clean handoff, and our guy went in untouched. You're up 27-12, but then they score on three consecutive touchdown drives. What changed for them, and how did you keep your troops rallied and ready to come back? Well, I think they, they raised their level of play to where they were playing clean it, it, they were they were executing just way more clean mm -hmm. on a consistent basis and when you do that and you have good players you're tough to stop it's not like uh, pretty good offense th that's exactly right and Zach Conk can make plays it, when nobody's when nobody's open or he doesn't like it he's going to take off running and he is a hoss now he to is. get down and uh, so you know what a good a good offense is going to do that to you central arkansas may do that uh, to us tonight and the thing is is we've got to raise our our level of, uh, of intensity and, and, and match theirs and make a play and get and, uh, force a punt. Parker McKenzie, after an interception that gave Stephen F. the ball, which they took in to take the lead 32-27, comes back with some big throws in that next drive. You cap it off with a DeAndre Brown 20-yard touchdown run, his third of the game, and then in a game in which your defense gave up a lot of yards, some huge plays down the stretch to seal it. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, defenses nowadays are going to give up yards the key is don't give up points. And, mm. and if you don't give up points, you got a great chance to win the game. And, uh, and they made a stand when they had to. And, uh, you know, are there things that we would like to have done better on defense? Yes, yeah. same thing on offense. But you know what? Our guys made, by and large, made more plays than SFA. It's nice to have things to work on after a victory, isn't it? Oh, it's lovely. 2-0 and oh in yes. the conference. As we go to break here, take a look at scores from around the rest of the Southland Conference. How about Incarnate Word giving UTEP from the FBS a good game? And there you see Central Arkansas with a blowout victory over Northwestern State. ACU gets those Bears in Conway tonight. We'll look ahead to that game in just a bit here on the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Welcome back to the Ken Column Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. I'm joined by Daniel Zapata, online sports editor for The Optimist, and Colin Weeder. Thanks for joining us again, the print sports editor for The Optimist. Guys, let's first just kind of break down where we're at in the season right now. Offensively, we see a lot more of Dallas Seeley and some other guys. Parker is still the starting quarterback, but what's the situation going into Central Arkansas? Well, the situation heading into Central Arkansas is, is basically – what it's been the last couple of weeks. We've seen a lot of Parker McKenzie. Uh, he's, he's definitely still the starter. Um, but Dallas is coming in, you know, on a lot of run situations um, just to keep the defense honest on a lot of zone reads. Um, you know, he's, he's been able to create some great, um, some great plays with his legs, six carries, 49 yards last week. And I think right now he's actually the, the third leading rusher on the team. So um, basically what it's been all season, you know, lots of, lots of passing still for Parker. He's still the primary guy. But uh, Dallas is, is getting his reps in as well. So, yeah. Well, you talked about him being the third leading rusher on the team. Let's talk about the number one leading rusher for the Wildcats, DeAndre Brown. He had a pretty phenomenal game for the Wildcats against SFA, three touchdowns, over 130 yards rushing. So he really had his A game out there. Um, you know, Herschel Sims, we've seen glimpses of time to time him really being able to put a couple of runs together. But uh, I think we're all kind of 
not sure which Herschel Sims we're going to get from week to week. But overall, the offense has looked really well. Uh, Cedric Gilbert had a great game uh, going for uh, over 150 yards receiving. So uh, overall, the Wildcats are in good shape yeah. on offense. Now, defensively, something Coach has stressed is playing all four quarters and especially going to Arkansas. It's going to be a tough game, tough match. Uh, last weekend, defense struggled in the first half some. What do they need to focus on going into this week? I would say this week, you know, it's been the same story it's been since week one against Fresno State run defense. They, you know, they've yet to hold a team under 200 yards rushing the entire season. And last week, it kind of boiled over, giving up 300, you know, and seven, almost seven and, a half, seven and a half yards of carry to, to SFA. So they really struggled last week, and, and Coach has been saying it all season, you know, you have to stop the run, or eventually it's going to come back to bite you. And, and he said last week, you know, Coach Doolin, you know, he doesn't like whenever teams run on him like that. So we're, I, I expect them, you know, to improve and, and tighten up the, the run defense a little bit. So. And when you give up over 500 yards of total offense, you know, against the Lumberjacks last week, you know, it doesn't, doesn't seem like that's a really good place to go from there. But, I mean, there's really no place to go but up. The secondary for the Wildcats has been really strong. The uh, pass defense has been really great. We've been able to limit a lot of uh, good quarterbacks so far. But like Colin said, just the rush defense has been really rough. And I think if the Wildcats can really kind of find a, um, a secure place to where they feel in their rush defense, then I think we'll be really solid moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, going into today's game, last year, the Wildcats, they were in a different position. Cade Munden was starting quarterback. Uh, some guys like Justin Stevens are gone, but Jonathan Epps is still here. And we, again, have strong offense and defense, Sam Denmark. Um, what do the Wildcats have to do to get a win in Conway? Well, I think they're definitely going to have to play um, a lot better, a lot better football this year, um, especially on offense. Last year, they kind of surprised Central Arkansas because they didn't expect them to pound the rock the way they did with Cade Munden and DeAndre Brown. Um, and they caught a couple lucky breaks because the defense, I mean, forced seven turnovers. And they had a plus six turnover margin all game. So they were riding that. Um, I think this year they're going to have to, you know, survive another shootout. And uh, I think they're, they're well equipped to do that. They have good receivers on the outside. Um, and they have, a good, they have a good offense. I mean, but defensively, like I said, it's just going to have to be tightening up the screws on the rush defense. And they should be good. But this is a good quality Central Arkansas team. So. Yeah, and the Bears just overall, they're just really solid, uh, especially on the offensive end. They have yet to um, throw an interception, or um, but they also have just a limited number of turnovers. So they're a really clean team overall, and um, you know, big guys got to make big plays. Uh, like you said, Jonathan Epps last year had a great game. Um, you know, Justin Stevens had a great game. He's not here, but other guys like you already mentioned, Sam Denmark are gonna have to step up. But the offense is gonna be there. It's there every game for the Wildcats so far. But the the defense is just going to really have to step up. Wildcats are going to have to find a way to uh, limit the run, and uh, hopefully that secondary holds up like it has been. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, guys, for joining us. We'll see how today's game goes. Here's Hannah Knoll with other sports at ACU. Soccer won its first conference game 4-1 to against Nickel State University on the road last Friday. Scoring goals were freshman Dylan Owens, senior Lindsey Jones, freshman Chelsea Reedy, and freshman Sophie Standifer. Owens was a standout with five shots, two assists, and one goal against the Colonels. The four goals represent ACU's highest scoring game in the Southland Conference. The Wildcats went on to lose 1-0 against conference opponent Southeastern Louisiana. Goalkeeper Cindy Newton played all 90 minutes and had six saves to limit the Lions to only one goal. The Wildcats now have one win, one loss, and one tie in conference play. The team faces Northwestern State University on Friday and the University of Central Arkansas on Sunday. Volleyball dropped its first conference match of the season 3-1 against the University of Central Arkansas. The Wildcats won the first set 25-18, but UCA claimed games 2, 3, and 4, scoring a combined 76 points to ACU's 53. ACU's defense made impressive steps against the Bears' offense, but were unable to put up points of their own. Madison Hoover led the team with 17 digs, while Jennifer Lurch had 13 kills on the game. Sarah Siemens provided the Wildcat offense with 33 assists. The team is now 0 for 14 on the season. The Wildcats will face the Stephen F. Austin Lumberjacks at home on Saturday. Women's Cross Country placed third in the Texas A&M Invitational, where they competed against top SEC, Big 12, and Southland Conference teams last weekend. They finished in front of all five Southland teams. Junior Alexandria Hackett finished second in the 6K with a time of 20 minutes, 11 seconds. All members of the women's team finished in the top half of the standings for a total of 107 points. 
Hackett was named Southland Conference Athlete of the Week for the second time this season. The men's team was led by senior Daniel Block, who finished the 8K with a time of 25 minutes, 12 seconds. The Wildcats' effort went on to give ACU a final score of 422 points. Both teams traveled to Fayetteville, Arkansas this weekend to compete in the Chili Pepper Cross Country Festival. That's all for this week. For JMC Network Sports, I'm Hannah Nall. Thanks, Hannah. It's great to have volleyball back at home. When we come back, we'll preview Coach Collum's return to Conway as the Wildcats take on the Central Arkansas Bears. Stay with us on the Ken Collum Show, brought to you by Lawrence Hall. Back here on the Ken Collum Show, presented by Lawrence Hall, take a look at today's schedule for teams in the Southland Conference. How about that 90th edition of the Battle of the Piney Woods at NRG Stadium in Houston? Stephen F. Austin taking on Sam Houston State. Stephen F. 0-4 overall, 0-2 in the conference. They need to win this game over the Bearcats to keep whatever dwindling hopes they have of winning the Southland alive. Well, tonight in Conway, Arkansas, ACU takes on the University of Central Arkansas, a rematch of a game that ACU won in Plano last year. Backup quarterback Cade Munden threw three touchdowns in his first four passes of the game. He ran for 100 yards. DeAndre Brown went for big numbers, including a touchdown toss of his own, and ACU knocked off the Bears 52-35. Coach, Central Arkansas has a proud history of football. They've won three national championships on the NAIA level. Their last one was led by a quarterback. Can you tell us who this guy is right here? We are trying to discern who in the world is this number 15 who led the Bearcats? I don't know. It doesn't look like he's protecting the ball. So <laughs> he he I, really, sure he really is very, is. very cavalier with the football. But yeah. he he became the starting quarterback the sixth game of the. Look at him. <laughs> this is this may have been the inspiration for Tom Cruise in the movie <laughs> All the Right Moves, possibly. Not I, I can't confirm or deny oh, that. Boy. But Ken Collins. As a freshman, look at this. That's this good. looks like from 1947. This, this is good. The Ken you've Collins. Been, you've been born. Oh, let me tell you something. <laughs> you know? We we went into the good. bowels of the Central Arkansas Library yeah, to I find bet these. You did. Number 15, the sixth game of the season, Coach. As a true freshman, you led them to a, an NAI <laughs> national championship. 1916, the win over Central State in the title game. You threw a 60-yard touchdown pass. Yes, and it was a driving snowstorm. It, it was literally was. in Wilberforce, was Ohio. Awesome. Hey, in, in all seriousness, <laughs> uh, tonight you're you're going to uh, you're going to test the old theory that you can't go home again. You are going back to the place that I know meant so much. It's where you met your wife, Robin. That year, I think your sister was homecoming queen. Was That's she right. not, Leanne? Yes. Who who married some guy that that we've forgotten about Chris know. Thompson or whatever yes. his name is. Yes. But but coach, uh, this I know you played him last year and it was emotional because it was your alma mater. But to to play him there on the stripes as they say in Conway, that's going to be special, isn't it? Yeah, and and the thing is is you can't really prepare yourself to do that because I mean that is that is where I uh, I gave a lot to that place. Mm -hmm. I sat in classrooms and I did a coach there and played there. It's in GA there was a student assistant spent 12 years there. Uh, you know, playing him last year was a little bit weird. Yeah. You know, he says, now I'm now I'm I'm the enemy. You know, and now, but it's different going into Conway. Uh, so I don't know I don't know how it's going to work out. I I told my guys that don't hold me responsible for uh, really anything that I say or any, maybe you know yeah. any decisions that I make. I don't know how good that is as a head coach. But no, in all seriousness, it's going to be it'll be strange, but that that's a great place. It's yeah. going to be a great atmosphere. Uh, a lot, a lot of tailgating, tailgating going on, and and uh, and good football. We yeah. match up really well with those guys. So uh, the fans there are going to get to see their first taste, really, of of, of ACU football. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we look forward to it. And uh, it'll it'll be an interesting evening. Coach, real quick, looking back on the field, your offense, as Grant mentioned last year, Cade Munden was starting quarterback. This past week, we saw Dallas Sealy a lot more. What can we expect from your offense this week? Well, a little bit of everything. We're going to try to stay as balanced as we can because we feel like that is the key. You've got to be able to run the ball, but you've got to be able to throw it. Now, our, our philosophy has been over the years, use the tools uh, that you have in your toolbox. And Dallas, has his level of consistency is at a point now where we can trust him to go in the game, and he, he brings a different set of abilities uh, to that position. But the fact is, is Parker McKenzie is our guy. I mean, mm. he's a solid guy, but it is a good changeup. And, you know, we've had probably 
six different guys take a snap so far. That's so right. I, I don't know. You'll have to you'll have to go to Conway and, and see what happens. Well, whoever is taking the snap is going to face a fierce defensive line for Central Arkansas. It should be a great test, and we've had a couple of uh, of great matchups with them, and then most recently, of course, last week against Stephen F. Austin. So, um, chance to go to three and zero. That's Big right. night tonight. That's right. Got to play well to do it for four quarters. It'll be a four-quarter squabble, as I tell these guys. It's it's on for four quarters. You can't play good for three and win the game. Yeah. You can't do that. You got to play good for four, and they can't play good for three and win the game. So yeah. it's a it'll be a good matchup. All right. The game kicks off at six o'clock from Estes Stadium in Conway, Arkansas. Lance Fleming and I will have the broadcast on the ACU Sports Network at five thirty. For Shara and for Coach Collins. I'm Grant Boone. Thanks for watching the Ken Collins Show presented by Lawrence Hall. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll see you next week.